Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. My name is Mrs. Hoffman, and I'm a fifth grade teacher at Delaware Elementary School. I'm excited to be with you today to talk more about geometry, and specifically more about triangles. Um, I know we've talked about geometry and triangles before, but we're going to go even deeper into what we learned last time. So before we do that, though, let's do a quick refueling break. Now, this is a different, than when we, different one than what we've done before. This one is called mountain breathing. And if you notice, some of our mountains are a little bit taller than others. So as we take our deep breaths, we're going to start with a big deep breath, but then our next one's going to get even bigger. And our last, our middle one here is going to get even bigger. That's going to be our biggest breath. And then we're going to bring it down. So we're going to take five big breaths, making it a little bit bigger each time. All right, so you follow along with me. When we get to the top of that mountain, we're gonna hold that breath for just a moment before we let it out. All right, here we go. Take a nice big deep breath in and hold it. Let it out, another bigger deep breath. Hold and let it out. Biggest deep breath, here we go. Hold and let it out. Little small breath this time. Hold and let it out. Last big deep breath in. Hold and let it out. Perfect. All right. Last time when we talked about triangles, we talked about three new vocabulary words. There were three kinds of triangles we talked about. Let's see if you remember those words. We talked about equilateral triangles. We talked about isosceles triangles, and we talked about scalene triangles. And if you remember, I brought in my angle legs that helped us with these triangles. So take a look here. This was the equilateral triangle that we talked about last time. The equilateral triangle had three sides, just like every triangle, but what did we remember about those three sides? Look at the colors of my angle legs. What do you notice about them? Exactly, they're all the same size. So an equilateral triangle has three sides all the same. Take a look at our isosceles triangle. What's different about the equilateral and isosceles triangles? Remember to focus on those colors. What do you see? Perfect. Two sides the same, one different. But what both of these triangles have in common is they both have three sides. Let's take a look at our last triangle here. This is our scalene triangle. Look at the colors, what do you notice? Exactly, every side is a different size. So a scalene triangle is gonna have all sides different. So equilateral has all sides the same. Isosceles has two sides equal. And then that scalene triangle has no sides the same. But did you know that triangles can actually be classified in more than one way? So I want you to think about this. I go by a lot of different names. Mrs. Hoffman, Just Hoffman, Kathy, my dad calls me Cat. I have lots of different names that all represent who I am. And triangles are the same way. If you play a sport, you might even go by something like your jersey number, or maybe your coach just calls your last name. Maybe your best friend has a nickname for you. Whatever name those are, they still represent you. So our triangles also have different names. Sort of think of it as a first name and a last name. All triangles are gonna have two classifications, a first name and a last name. So these three classifications that we talked about last time, equilateral, isosceles, and scalene, are sort of like our triangle's last names. So today, we're gonna bring what we learned in fourth grade back to what we know about our triangles in fifth grade, and we're gonna classify our triangles in two ways. So take a look at this. Acute triangles, okay, let's think about that word acute. I know you learned this in fourth grade. Acute is a type of angle, but it's also a type of triangle. So I want you to think about the angles in this triangle. So I see three angles, do you see them? I see one here at the top, one on the bottom left, and one on the bottom right. So look at those types of angles. If you had to give me a name for that type of angle, let's look right here at this orange and red. Look at this angle. What do you notice about that angle? What kind is it? Perfect, it's an acute angle. Hmm, well that's interesting. Let's look at this other one. Look at the blue and the red and this angle here. What kind of triangle or what kind of angle is that? Hmm, interesting. That's an acute angle as well. Okay, we have one more angle to check. Let's try it. Look up here in the top. Do you see this angle here? That's an even smaller angle. So that's definitely acute, isn't it? 
Hmm, that's interesting. I want you to hold that in the back of your mind for just a moment, that in this triangle that has three sides, there are three acute angles. Take a look at this triangle. Here's another one right here. How many angles does it have? Yep, three. Let's look at our three angles. Let's look at the red and the green. Look really closely at that one. It's kind of a tough one. So the red and the green angle right here is just barely an acute angle. How about the yellow and the green? That one's a bit easier to see, isn't it? That one's definitely acute. And then look at the red and the yellow at this angle here. Another acute angle. So when we give a triangle the name acute, it's because it has three acute angles. That's the only way a triangle can be acute is if we have three acute angles. And I'm gonna tell you why that is in just a moment. So let's go back and think about those words scalene, equilateral, and isosceles. If you had to look at this first triangle right here that has orange, red, and blue, what does that tell you about all the three sides? Yep, they're all different. So what kind of triangle has all different sides? Yeah, that's silly scalene. Great job, guys. So silly scalene here has three sides that are different. When we give the name scalene, what part of the triangle are we looking at, the sides or the angles? Perfect, we're looking at the sides. But when we named this triangle an acute triangle, what part of the triangle were we looking at there? Exactly, we were looking at the angles. So those two things, the sides and the angles, are the attributes, do you remember that word? The attributes of a triangle that give it its name. So remember those attributes are the things that make a triangle what it is, right? So down here, look at this triangle. Take a look at the sides this time. We know this is an acute triangle because it has three acute angles, but what kind of triangle is it if we classify it by its sides? Three different size, sides means scalene. Great, so two silly scalenes. Hold on to that thought though, because I know what you're thinking. Are all scalene triangles also acute? We're gonna investigate that further in a moment. Look at this triangle. Think about a right angle. In fourth grade, you might have learned that a right angle kind of looks like that L or even the corner of a, a square or a rectangle. So let's look here. Hmm. What do you notice in this triangle? Now, don't look at the sides. Let's look at the angles. Look here at this pink and green angle. Do you notice that it has an acute angle? Yeah, me too. So, so far, these are similar triangles, but look at this one green and pink here, what kind of angle is that? Perfect, that's an acute angle. Okay, so, so far I don't see a difference. So let's look really closely at that third angle. Look right here at this pink and pink angle right here. What kind of angle do you see there? Exactly, it's a right angle. Hmm, so a right triangle has to have a right angle. Let's investigate that further. Look at this one. Okay, so I see three sides, that makes it a triangle. When I look here, this is an acute angle, this green and red, and then the pink and red is also acute, but look at this third angle right here. What do you notice? Yeah, it's a right angle. So a right triangle has to have one right angle. Okay, so I want you to do me a favor. I want you to stick your two fingers, your two hands up in front of you like this and make L's. So we're gonna pretend that these are two right angles. And what I wanna know is, can I have a triangle that has two right angles? So if I take these two angles and I put them together like this, is that gonna make a triangle? That won't make a triangle unless I do something weird with my hands, right? And if I turn them this way, well, that doesn't make a triangle either. So can a triangle have more than one right angle? No, I can make a triangle like this, make one right angle and then put my hand there and there's my third angle. So if I have a right angle at all in my triangle, then it is absolutely a right triangle. So acute triangles have to have all three angles acute, but a right triangle has to have one right angle. So let's see if you can make an educated guess about obtuse triangles. If an acute triangle must have all acute angles and a right triangle must have one right angle, then take a look at this triangle and see if you can figure out what attribute makes an obtuse triangle obtuse.
what are you thinking? Are you thinking about this angle right here, this red and yellow? What kind of angle is that? Perfect, it's an obtuse angle. Okay, so one obtuse angle, but then look at my other two angles. What are those? Perfect, those are acute. So any obtuse triangle has to have one obtuse angle. Let's see if that's true of this other one here. Hmm, well I see an obtuse angle here and I see acute and acute. Oh, that's interesting. So all triangles are gonna have some acute angles in them. But what makes them not acute? What makes a right triangle a right triangle? Think back. Perfect, one right angle. What makes an obtuse triangle obtuse? Yep, one obtuse angle, perfect. Okay, let's very quickly go back. Remember scaling isosceles and equilateral? Take a look here. This guy has two sides the same. If he has two sides the same, what kind of triangle is he? Yep, he's isosceles, very nice. Here's another silly scalene with three sides different. So are all scalene triangles also acute? No, not at all. So we've got a lot, of, a lot of investigating to do here. Take a look over here. Here's another silly scalene. He's obtuse. That's crazy. We have silly scalene that's, that's acute, silly scalene that's right, and silly scalene that's obtuse. He can be all kinds of triangles. And then down here, we've got another isosceles obtuse triangle. Hmm, so let's think about this for a moment. I've got all these different kinds of triangles. Along the top, you can see all of the categories for my sides. Looking at the attribute of sides. So equilateral has three sides equal, isosceles has two sides equal, scalene has no sides. And then down along this side over here, I've got my other attributes, my angles. So acute triangles, right triangles, and obtuse triangles. And you'll notice that the acute says it has to have three acute angles. Right says it has to have one right angle but two acute angles. And obtuse says one obtuse angle and two acute. So if you have anything other than an acute angle in a triangle, that's gonna change its name. So I wanna see if it's possible to make all of these different combinations. So hang in there with me, let's take a look. On this first triangle, I want you to notice the sides. We're gonna talk about the sides first, then we'll come back and look at the angles. So do you remember what these little tick marks on the side mean? Yeah, that means that all of those sides are the same. So this equilateral triangle has all sides the same. And because all the sides are the same, I know that it's equilateral. So looking here then at the angles, look at all three angles in that triangle. What kind of angles are they? Perfect, they're acute angles. That means that this triangle is called an acute equilateral triangle. It has two names. Its first name is acute, its last name is equilateral, and that makes it equilateral, acute equilateral triangle. So now my question is, can I make an equilateral triangle that has a right angle? Hmm. Well, I'm thinking that if I make that L shape and those two sides are equal, then my third side always has to be longer. So I cannot make a right acute triangle. It's not possible. You can try it as many times as you want at home, but it'll never work out quite right. Can I make an obtuse one? Hmm. Equilateral means it has to have all sides the same. So if I'm thinking about that obtuse angle, I don't think there's any way to take an obtuse angle and connect the two sides and make all of the sides the same. That one side opposite that angle is gonna be so much bigger. So the only type of equilateral triangle is an acute equilateral triangle. You won't be able to make an equilateral right triangle or an equilateral obtuse triangle. It just won't work. All right, so let's think about isosceles. So here's an isosceles triangle, and I know it's isosceles because it has two sides the same and one different. Look at the angles. What do you notice about all three angles in this triangle? Perfect, they're all acute. So can I make an isosceles acute triangle? Yeah, perfect. Okay, let's think about a right isosceles. If you remember back, I think we have already looked at this one before. So I'm gonna make that right angle here. There's that little square in the corner that shows me that it's a right angle. I can see that it has two acute, that makes it right. 
of right angle and two acute angles. Look at the tick marks on the side. One here and one here, that means those two sides are equal. And then two tick marks here, which means that one's different. So this guy is a right isosceles triangle. So do you notice how I'm taking these triangles apart and I'm looking at them separately at just the angles and then I'm looking at the sides? That's what you have to do as well. Think sides and then angles or angles and then sides. Don't try to put them all together. That's too many vocabulary words and it's way too confusing. Let's take a look at obtuse. So if I have an obtuse isosceles triangle, here's my two sides that are equal and my one that's different. And then if I look right here, way up on top, that's my obtuse angle. Do you see how this one has to be so much longer here in order to get that extra angle, in order to get that, that obtuse angle? That's why I can't connect those two sides and end up with an equilateral triangle because this side will always be longer. Take a look at this guy up here. Scalene says no sides equal. So if I look here, there's one tick mark on this side, two on this side, and three on that top side. So all of those sides are different, which makes it scalene. What makes it acute? What's required for it to be an acute triangle? Yeah, three acute angles. Do you see all three acute angles? Here's one, two, and this teeny tiny little guy right up here. All right, let's see about a right scalene. All right, so here's that right angle. That's what makes this triangle a right triangle. And then one tick mark, two, and three, meaning all sides are different. Okay, last one down here. Here's the obtuse angle that makes this guy obtuse, and you can see the tick marks that mean all sides are different. So there's two triangles in this whole configuration that I can't make, and it's equilateral right and equilateral obtuse. Those triangles don't exist. You can't make it happen with just three sides and three angles, but all the other combinations we can make that's a lot of triangles. Let's try a couple with me real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna give you um, four triangles here. And with each triangle, we're gonna look at the attributes that make it acute or right or obtuse. And then we're gonna look at the sides to determine whether it's equilateral, isosceles, or scalene. So let's start with the angles first. What do you notice in the corner of this triangle? Yeah, there's a little square there. Do you remember what that square means? Perfect, it means that that's a right angle. So because this triangle has one right angle, what is it already going to be classified as? Acute, obtuse, or right? Perfect, it's gonna be a right angle. And we know that because we see that right side there, or that right angle there. Let's look at the sides now. On the sides of these triangles, I notice there's one tick mark here, two tick marks here, and three tick marks here. What does that tell you about all the sides of this triangle? Are they the same or are they different? Perfect, they're different. So if all of the triangles or all of the sides of this triangle are different, then what kind of triangle is it? Isosceles, silly scalene, or equilateral? Yeah, good memory. So this guy is a scalene triangle. So we can call this a right triangle and a scalene triangle. This is classifying by angles. This is classifying by sides. Take a look at this next guy up here. He looks familiar, right? I think we've looked at this triangle before. Let's talk angles first. What do you notice about all of the angles in this triangle? Yeah. They're all acute angles, which means that this is an acute triangle. What do you notice about the sides of this triangle? Are they the same? Are they different? Are there two the same? How do you know that? You're exactly right. How do you know that all of those sides are the same? I don't see any colors on there. What gave away the answer? Perfect, these three tick marks here told you that all of those sides were the same. So what kind of triangle has all sides equal? Yeah, perfect, equilateral triangle. So this is an acute equilateral triangle. You guys are rock stars, I love this. Okay, take a look at this one. Let's talk angles first. Which angle's kind of the big bossy guy that gives it away? What's the angle that makes 
the difference. Are you thinking about this angle here? What kind of angle is that? Is it acute, obtuse, or right? Yep, it's obtuse. So if it has an obtuse angle, automatically we know that this is an obtuse triangle. Okay, look at the sides. What do you notice? Yep, I see one tick mark here, two here, and three here. What's that tell you? All sides are different, so this is our silly scalene. So we have an obtuse scalene triangle. All right, let's take a look over here at this one. I'm noticing right here, this is kind of a more difficult angle to see, but look very carefully at it. Yep, it's obtuse, very nice. Kind of a tricky one there. Sometimes when I have a piece of paper and I'm trying to figure out the angle, I have a really neat trick for you. If you take the piece of, a piece of paper or even a sticky note and you take that paper and you line it up with one side here, if you notice how, whoopsie, let's come back. I always forget these are touch screen. If you come back this way and you look, that triangle comes outside of this, what that means is that this triangle is obtuse. If you were to put it on an acute angle, let's see if I can do this without touching, do you notice how that goes back inside? It's gonna cover everything up. So, taking a look right here, there's that obtuse angle. And then, oops, I already accidentally gave you the answer. Here's our two sides the same and one different. So this is our isosceles triangle, obtuse isosceles. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a way to try some of these at home. Some of these activities are ones that we've talked about before, but we can just do them in a different way. So take a look. Um, one of the things that we have in our house a lot, because we do a lot of baking, are toothpicks. Now you can do this with toothpicks if you like, or you can even do this with something like sticks or blades of grass. So what I did is I took my toothpicks and I made an equilateral triangle here. So now that I have my equilateral triangle, I can take a pencil or a marker and I can write equilateral under that. Then I can go back and look at that same triangle and think to myself, hmm, is that acute, obtuse, or right? Yeah, that's an acute triangle. So I could write also under here acute. Or if I wanted to, I could color all of my acute triangles one color and all of my obtuse triangles another color. So then here I made an obtuse or an acute equilateral. Oh, goodness gracious, let me try that again. I made an isosceles acute triangle. So I put two toothpicks together here and two here. That means those sides are the same. And then made this one. And again, I have that acute triangle so I can label those sides. Up here, here's my obtuse one. If you have glue in your house, you can glue these down. But another way you could do this is you could go out and gather sticks or even pieces of grass. And you can tear those pieces of grass into smaller sizes or bigger sizes to make those triangles. And then try to classify them two ways, not just by their angles and not just by their sides, but both together. We talked about this one before. This is another great thing to do outside on the sidewalk. Make that tape triangle. Give as many different triangles as you can. And then you're gonna color them based this time on their angles. So you're gonna color all of your acute triangles one color, all of your obtuse triangles another color, and all of your um, right triangles a third color. And then another thing that you can do, this is really easy. You can make yourself your own foldable at home. All it takes is a piece of paper. You're gonna take a big piece of paper that's like this. And when you first get it, it'll be nice and flat. So you'll open it like this and you're gonna fold it closed to sort of make two doors here. Then all I did was take my scissors and I made two cuts here. Two cups make, cuts makes three flaps. So I did that on both sides. Then on the outside, I named my triangles based on their sides on one side and my cut categories for angles on the other side. And then when I opened it up, if you notice here, here's my equilateral triangle. So when I open this flap, I told you what makes a triangle equilateral. Well, all sides have to be equal. Then I did my very best to draw that equilateral triangle. So then over here on my acute side, there's my acute um, word on the inside, three acute angles. And then of course I did my best to draw that triangle. So when you're done, you have the definitions and the drawings for each of your different types of triangles. And you can do this with any kind of paper. It doesn't have to be plain copy paper. You can use 
um, notebook paper if you want. You could even make flashcards out of these if you want. Um, so you could draw the triangle on one side and on the back of that piece of paper you can write the classification for it and then do some practicing back and forth. So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so glad that you were with me. That was a lot of geometry and a lot of vocabulary, but you guys did a great job. Thanks so much. See you soon.